Hello and welcome into the NECC here, week two, League of Legends, and we've got a banger on our hands, Fish and Soap Chan, the legendary duo, kicking your day off and bringing your day home here actually on the NECC2 channel, we'll be here the whole way, and we're starting in the Navigators Mid-East, it's Misericordia taking on Ohio Wesleyan here, Soap Chan, the pro draft is done, we're ready to hop in, both these teams lost in week one, so they're hoping to turn things around here today. Yes, they are. Both teams lost. Um, we had a sweep for Ohio Wesleyan. We had a two, a one and two for Misericordia Cougars. So Misericordia a little bit on the lead here, but are all both teams looking to turn this one around and fish. As you said, things are already on the run. Players are steamed up to get things rolling. So I can't wait to see what they're going to bring to the table. Yeah, I'm always excited, especially after a loss. You're trying to figure out things. Maybe we'll get some spicy picks here to kick off the uh, evening. We'd love to see that. But again, it does sound like we're ready to go whenever they are. So we'll be able to hop into the draft at any moment. Again, it's Misericordia taking on OWU Onyx here. Navigators Mid-East, NECC2. And it looks like we're ready to hop into the draft right now. Let's see hopping in, hopping in. Yes, there we go. All right. We've got, well, let me try to understand here. Both teams have the, the same symbol. There we go. Thank you so much to our producers. Misericordia Cougars on the blue side. Oh, Wu Onyx on the red side. First event's going to be Jax, followed up by Oh God. Okay. How, what do you think of that? <laughs> this feels definitely like some uh, targeted bands here, right? Just like, all right, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna pull up the OPGG of who the opposing team's gonna play. I'm just gonna simply target those bands. The anti band is. I cannot remember the last time I've seen anti band. I'm gonna be honest. That is a new one for me. It looks like we'll start off with a Mordekaiser in the top lane. Yeah, yeah, and. Also followed up by Scion as well. Hmm, that, that's very interesting. I think we're seeing some OG champions getting some some light, even if it's not the pick as a Scion, but the any and the Ben. I haven't seen her in such a long time either, Fish. So I will see how these teams are going to round up this composition. Um, Wukong, all right. We're going to see probably that one on the jungle. Very interesting. I think comboing with the Scion can have great success. Zach going to be the enemy jungler as well. Looks promising. Yeah, I think they, both these teams coming out, you know, with these at the top and jungle picks very strong. It looks like it will be a Pantheon mid as well. We've seen Pantheon. He's always kind of a great counter assassin. If you can play it right, you can absolutely shut down the enemy mid. Though Silas is scary. For the side of O oh, Onyx, because I mean, you can steal the Mordekaiser ult, you can steal the Zack ult if you need CC. That Silas pick is really, really strong. Just into the first three champions so they pick. Yes, can you imagine the Silas just going from downtown, ganking you in the bot lane with the Pantheon ulti, or just getting the mobility with the Zack ulti as well? Mordekaiser just going into the Shadow Realm, uh, getting someone isolated from the rest of the team, and just finishing them down that's going to be incredible finishing up we had the olaf the the sandra the kale very off meta very non-ordinary picks there the nasus the shen followed up there on the side of misericordia cougars caitlin is going to be the first adc to come into play with the maokai support nyla look at her go and a seraphine so two galleys here in the bot lane we love to see a fish that bot lane of oh, the side of Ooh, Onyx can be so annoying to take care of. The Seraphine's going to have a ton of healing. Nyla, a very niche champion. When she pops off, she can absolutely dominate a match. Haven't seen her too often. I don't know if that uh, melee ADC design quite hit the mark for what Rai was looking for, but excited to see her. Of course, against Caitlyn Maokai, there's a ton of CC in that lane. I expect Mist and Doughboy to try and set up the snare into the trap, into the headshot. Honestly, my big concern here, Sof Chan, is that Silas is just, I mean, like, across the board. Mordekaiser ult, yeah, he'll take that. Zach ult, yeah, he'll take that. Pantheon ult, sure, why not? <laughs> Maokai ult, go for it. Ace in the hole to finish off a running away champion. Why? Like, Silas just gets unlimited lovely alts to pick from. That's my big concern right now for Ms. Gordia Cougars. Yeah, so at the same time, um, Oru can definitely... Not, not only with the Silas, because if it does fall down a little bit, it may take some time, at least mid-game, to be able to 
pull something off when they have the at least the level six getting around the first Drake, the first heroes of the game to be able to do something more. If they they don't get to have a huge lead on the Pantheon, of course, Pantheon's super powerful in the early stages of the game. So that's something definitely to bear in mind. I think that even if Silas is not in the party, Wu can do so much with the Seraphine ulti, with the Wukong, with the Scion. <laughs> of course, the Scion, even when he's dead, he can do so much to help the team too. On the side of Misericordia, I think they have a very traditional standard composition. They have the only thing lacking here would be in a PC in the mid lane, but they covered that with the Mordekaiser on the top. So I think it's very well rounded. The Maokai is going to provide a lot of sustainability. And of course, just for himself, not a healer, but for providing definitely the engages with the CC Pantheon as well with the raw damage. And Clay Caitlin has just said, if these champions get to help her set up the Yodel, Yodel trap, she's just going to be able to deal massive damage on those traps. And the headshots are going to finish everyone off. So both sides looking really nice. Do you think there's any of these teams that have an upper hand in the early game, Fish? Oh, I think in the early game, I think it has to be Misericordia. I think Zach, I'm just, I, I hate playing against Zach, but it's because he has so many just powerful gank paths. He's able to get in lanes when you can't see him. He can get around your traditional warding spots. Like, for example, if you're top lane, you kind of have to ward aggressively on the other side of that ridge line towards blue buff. Otherwise, Zach's just going to slingshot over the wall when you push a tower. So I think Miscreant, if he can get ganks, Put either Mordekaiser head, try and put Pantheon ahead. I really like Misericordia's early game. I will say my only concern for their late game team, you're talking about the Caitlyn Soap Chan, is they don't have any backline for Caitlyn. Maokai wants to go in, Zach's going to want to go in, Mordekaiser's going to take someone to the Death Realm, and Pantheon's going to want to jump in. I am worried that somebody's going to have to maybe sacrifice a little bit and stay back and help peel for Caitlyn. Otherwise, Wukong and Silas are going to have a field day with an AD carry without any backup. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you are a Wukong, you can just go to the back line, get the Caitlyn, as well as the Silas. Nyla can do so much with the protection that she has with the Silas with the Wukong. So I think there's a lot of potential for we definitely with the Seraphine to effectively sustain on the healing side or the shielding side and having such a great peel with the Encore. I think Owu can do massively well in the later stages of the game. Misericordia has the upper hand with Pantheon in the first levels, especially in the mid lane against the Silas. If Zach on the hands of Miscreant can do nice ganks in the mid lane that could set up for advantageous Drakes or first Heralds, Caitlyn by herself, she can already do so much by being in a long distance being safe just because of her range and Maokai can be a nice front line for her in the beginning in the in the bottom lane so I believe that having the mist for in a good positioning having some nice wards in the tree in the trabush and in the river might just help the bot lane to use maintain themselves stable so they can reach a nice point in the rest of the game as we get ready to hop in here, it is game number one of the day on the NECC2 channel. Again, Navigators mini showdown here between a pair of teams hoping to pick up their first win of this spring season. It's Ohio Wesleyan University, probably is going to be called Uwu at some point in the night by one of yes. us, I would assume, because it is yes. so close. <laughs> so if you to say Uwu, that is who we're talking about, is Ohio Wesleyan taking on Misericordia, the Cougars here, hoping both teams get their first win, and I'm excited. I think... I'm going to be watching that mid lane. You talked about it quite a bit. So Champ Pantheon has the early advantage. I think whichever one of those mid laners comes out ahead at that 10, 12 minute mark, I think that's the team that wins this game. If one of them's like four and one, five and two, I like that team as we hop into it. Yes, we are hopping into this one. So excited. We have the Cougars on the blue side, the Ohio Wesleyans on the red side. Well, We'll see if any any of these teams is going to go for anything sneaky. Right now, just positioning themselves probably to scout the area, defend the jungle against any possible invades. Differently from the red side. Well, both sides actually in the mirror matchup, they're going to be going one for the top side, one for the bottom jungle, and the red team is advancing even more. They do have King Kong and a futile thing, at least... 
making some moves towards that blue buff. Saintly Comic is all alone. It's, it is Misericordia on the blue side here. As we see, we might get a bit of an invade. We get some backs being channeled. Phoenix is there as well. And there will not be a buff steal attempt. I don't see any ping, so I actually don't know if Saintly Comic knows they're there. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that they do know is that the red team might have placed the water. I don't know if they have vision of that, or if it's just in the fog of war of the blue buff. As you said, there were no pings, so maybe it's just reliant on the comms, on the voice chat for them to, to advertise that they have vision on the blue buff. Right now, just leashing on the red here, leashing on the blue on the other side, and we start with both junglers potentially going to meet during the scuttle next up in the river well it's it's it is the game it has started it's the the slow early game the correct startup at every caster's favorite least favorite i want to see some 5v5 five five brawls in the <laughs> Where's my solo queue games at? We'd love to do that. We're just 5v5 and at level 1, but instead, as you said, I think right now we maybe look for a jungle battle level 3 at that top scuttle. Maybe Futile Thing wants to get aggressive. Zach's early clear, and he does take a decent bit of damage before he uses Smite, so maybe looks for an invade on that blue, depending on what Phoenix is doing on the top side. I know Phoenix is getting run down a little bit here by Saintly Comic, but they'll kind of exchange blows and turn around as a Rich does land on the Doughboy, but right now... Nothing too crazy happening besides up in this top lane, but with grass, the scion should be perfectly helpful. Yes, soon enough for all. Phoenix getting some nice damage on Sinly Comic. But as every top lane goes, they're just going to be slapping each other until a jungler appears and they have an actual backup to go for a 1v1. Or maybe they're going to be even more ballsy. Speaking of ballsy, Mist Mr. is going to go very aggressive because of a range in the jungle. There is already uh ignite being popped off we talked about that meanwhile phoenix very low but yeah, you mentioned that pantheon's gonna have an early game advantage he uses it puts that ignite on king kong nothing ends up coming up we do have futile thing rotating up top side behind saintly comic this could be a great chance for first blood on that top side of the map we do see meanwhile pantheon's gonna go in king kong trying to sustain shield is going to go up dash right back in a flash away by the pantheon Meanwhile, you can see top lane, Mordekaiser and Wukong backing, so a couple of failed kill attempts here. <laughs> Still zero to zero. Yeah, mid lane now, no summoner spells. They are both down at top lane. We have Mordekaiser with no flash, so we see that before they got that recall going on. Oh, no, 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 no. Mid lane, though, is going to be first blood for the King Kong Chrono onto Oxen. Really nice from Owu. But as I was saying, Fish, just. Uh, a good gank that a futile thing on a Wukong did there on the top lane. At least guaranteed the flash out of the Mordekais are in a good back for the Scion to push a little bit more. Ooh, Phoenix gets caught, gonna get Death Grasp back in. Miscreant is there. I don't know if they can get in range of this Scion. As you mentioned, no flash for Stanley Comet, so Scion will just simply walk back to Tower. Meanwhile, Mami Nami and Creechies are pushing in. On Mist and Doughboy, but looks like they're just going to pass it farm. They do a futile thing back here, but a tower dive this early, especially with a Maokai, is a very risky proposition. I don't know if that's what Uwu wants to do here. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. But the one thing that Oru wants to do is, is having vision all across the jungle, all across the river. And that's how they managed to get a nice invade, take those Krigs out of the blue team, get some domination, at least some fear here in the bot lane, and possibly uh, first very early Drake on this first match of week two of League of Legends. So I'm um, liking the stance coming from Oru. Yeah, very aggressive as you said. They are set up for dragon, but it looks like the tile thing actually just instead will decide to go back and clear some of his jungle. Doesn't want to fall too far behind in level looking for a gank, but I think anytime they want to pull the trigger, they easily can. You do see you have Miscreant hanging out mid. Like he might have gone for an attempted gank. Meanwhile, we watch a Saintly Comic and Phoenix do battle. Neither of these taking too much damage. Phoenix still has yet to use his teleport. As you said, he got a great back thanks to that gank. So if he ever gets pushed down, 
and you just come right back to lane. Meanwhile, team's pretty even, honestly. It's only a 200 gold lead. Farm's pretty even besides in that mid lane, but uh, King Kong does have the kill, so we're still waiting for that first big fight here at the six minute mark. Yes, we are right now. Just the King Kong Chrono with the first blood, as you mentioned, Fish. And uh, you really want to have that on a Silas, Fish. What's going on here in the bot lane? Oxen's coming in. He's going to get a great stun. If you tell things right behind, Mommy Dami is ignited. Will go down. Creatures trying to dash forward. Heal going to be used. They want to get a kill onto Miss. If you tell things is there, he's going to dash onto Doughboy. There should be a free kill onto the supports. Now Oxen is here. He does hit level 6. Miscreant coming down. Can he get in range for an elastic slingshot? Oh. King Kong Chrono is right behind him. I think the Zack's going to find a way on. The Creatures flashes forward, picks up the kill. You doubt things trying to run away. Ace in a hole stolen there by King Kong. An interesting ult for sure. Meanwhile, top lane, Phoenix and Saintly Comic getting into a little bit of a battle here. So it looks like everyone will walk away. So it will be a two for one. You're in favor of Misericordia down in that ball lane. Yeah, the cookers are getting a nice little breathing room to be able to position themselves for a, the first Drake of the game. Of course, it's going to be an ocean solo to see here on the map. Uh, red side though, clearing the crew, uh, the scuttle crowd, excuse me. And that's going to grant some nice vision. And once again, we see King Kong Chrono being very sneaky. They have the wood, they have the pink. Why have you not cleaned that one up? Maybe they're going to try to steal this buff. They're close. They're going to go for a 1v1. Much damage dealt. Chains are going to land. Oh, the ace and the... <laughs> oh, the ignite! Oh, passive is going to go down, fish. Still good to proc that passive before the dragon fight. I think you walk away, you take this as a win. You've got a blast cone here. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to Blast Cone to safety, and this should guarantee Dragon. There's no longer a Flash available on this Zac, though Preach is, is pushed very far forward. And unfortunately, despite all that, they don't get anything. They aren't even going to attempt the Dragon for the side of Ohio Wesley. Yes, they're trying to be a little more conservative on this one. Though Doughboy does not want to do that no more. Mummy Nemi getting very low on health. Of course, going to hit just the support. Doughboy very, very low. One more hit from Screeches. They don't manage to get that one, but Mummy Nemi gets the one on Maokai. The presence from Miscreen allows them to stay a little safe for mm, a few moments longer. But if they want to get something going anymore, they... They can even do it. They have the range. And missed four is so oh. low. No, look at that. Was that a scorch at the end? That was so close to being a KO. Well, I mean, Hami almost snuck a second one in just with the <laughs> splash damage off the Q. As you mentioned, the scorch doing a little bit of damage. They should be able to get a plate here at least one. Doughboy is coming back. Meanwhile, mid. Nice stretching strike there from Miss Kurian. We'll see. Maybe King Crow can get away. He does have the Pantheon. All futile thing will roll down, but this Wukong is not level 6. And they actually maybe had a chance to contest this Herald, but instead they're going to hand the first objective of the game over to the red side. Yeah, maybe they're going to position themselves now for that Drake. Well, okay, Zack is going, bot lane, mid lane, following up. Nice knock up from Phoenix onto St. Comic. The flash forward from the Wukong. The Hurricane's gonna land just so close to being down. Oh, they're even close to taking a futile thing as well. And the top lane, the Giant, they maintain, maintains themselves heavy, healthy for a while longer. That's a great job by St. Comic. He held the Death Realm as long as he could. He uses it at the very end to stay alive in a 1v3. Let's his team pick up Dragon on the other side of the map. So the first Ocean Dragon will go over to the blue side here. And it looks like we will have a Hextech Dragon as our next one. So no Hextech sold today. No teleporters to get across the map. And again, this game remains pretty even. So channel only 500 gold difference. Kills are dead. Even CS is... Pretty much even. I think the difference in mid lane is made up for by the difference in bot lane for the most part. There really is <laughs> in a team that's finding an edge right now. Yeah, that's very true, very true. I think the stance from both teams is at least equalizing in regards to aggression because there was one point where they were very, very passive. What is not passive is Mummy Nummy with the, going with the Encore on the bot lane. The Mist 4 is very, very close to dead. They manage a nice knock up there from Doughboy and they managed to escape. But Fish, 
I don't think Wukong wants to leave them at bay. They want to go for a dive on this one. They got the Maokai ult out. There is not a lot of disengage left and simply running away. King Kong Chrono gonna come here as well. Riptailed is down. They want the dive. Ace in the hole going to be picked up here. You have Oxen kind of hanging in out. Now gonna channel his ult. They wanna jump on the Caitlyn. They immediately pick up the kill. Here comes the Pantheon and everyone will disengage. Get out of tower range. Nami Nami in is a little bit of an awkward spot. Root does land on the Oxen, but you pick up the one kill, I think you just get away and have to be careful. Here comes Miscreen on the top side of the map, though Phoenix just gonna hang back under his tower and a well-executed tower dive in the bot lane. That's one kill for the red team. Yes, it was just one kill to null, so I think that was definitely good for them. We had a nice comeback from Oxen to pr protect the rest of the team, so very nice comeback. And I think at this point, as you said, it's very even across the board. I don't think there's anything that's going to happen of much different, aside from the moment that these champions get their first mythic item. The first one who gets it, I hope they use the time to use the power spike as, as their advantage and they try to go for engage. If it is the mid lane going for their first mythic item, that they go for roam. And the bot lane, if they get the mythic item first, that they go for the first kills and pushing in on those play teams because there's only less than two minutes on the clock to be able to get some of them. And if you are the blue team, you haven't gotten any just yet in the bot lane. Miscreen gonna come in, Mami Nami and Creatures trying to run away. They did have Futile Thing roaming down and Doughboy wasn't that close. I'd almost think maybe they could have turned and made a play there. But instead they simply have to retreat. Meanwhile, Saintly Comet gonna jump onto Phoenix and the Scion stay alive. It's gonna be forced to burn the ult. And the top laner for Ohio Wesleyan on the red side will make it out alive, but for how much longer? You just gotta burn your teleport, man! This is just a death waiting to happen for Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You you really don't want to be that close to Mordekaiser. And Oxen, I think, yeah, there we go. They noticed that there's someone was around the corner. No one is going to want to be there with a Pantheon ganking. So just better just come back. You have a TP. That's fine. Don't notice. Yeah, there we go. I don't notice if there were too many platings to go. I think there was a lot of damage on that top lane. But Miscreen using an ultimate here on King, Cron King Kong Chrono. Uxen is a little far away. They flash forward. They're in range for the, for the stun. It hits. It's going to be the first kill there for Miscreen. No, second kill there for Miscreen in the game. And that is giving a lot of capitalization for Pantheon as well, up to three assists right now. Yeah, that was a fantastic play by Miscreen and Oxen. Meanwhile, Saintly Comic really doesn't need too much help. Already getting Phoenix back down to half life. The Scion getting Bolli, the plates do fall. And gold again, only about a 400 gold difference between the two sides. And with dragons spawning here in the next 30 seconds. We'll see if anyone wants to take that or if Mami Nami and Creatures look for first tower. Meanwhile, Doughboy gonna charge in, gonna knock Mami Nami into tower range. On Perk gonna go out, gonna land on the Caitlyn. Here comes Futile Thing on the back line, but there's only one minion, so they cannot look for a dive. So a couple of alts blown right before Dragon, but nobody finds a kill. Yes, right before Dragon, as you said, and there's four people right now here in a bot lane. Futile thing ha has been knocked into place, but it was just the <laughs> the clone. It even fooled me, and that's fine. It happens sometimes. In the top lane, though, Saintly Comic is going to go on Phoenix, dealing so much damage already. The shield is going to pop, and the passive is down. It's a KO on them. King Kong Chrono joining in for the party, and bot lane is all about the action fish. Nature's Grass immediately used, catches Doughboy out. That's one kill picked up for Ohio Wesleyan. And now we'll see if they turn their eyes towards this dragon. It appears that'll be the case. You still have Miscreant passive. I do believe it's up by now, plus the flash. So could opt for a dragon steal if he really wants to. So Creatures and Mami Nami trying to push them away. Nice last exclaim shot. Plus the let's bounce. Mami Nami falls. Creatures. Trying to peel for himself, can't quite find it. Now all of a sudden, Dragon dropping low. Here comes the Pantheon all right on top. Who's gonna pick it up? It will be picked up 
by futile thing, but that's all that the red team's gonna get is they're gonna lose multiple members. Looks like Miscreant gonna just stay alive here, get the knock up on the futile thing. They'll run down the Wukong. And a triple kill for this Pantheon, three, one, and four, and now he's ready to brawl. Absolutely fantastic fight for Misery Cordia. Yes, and I was mentioning earlier, Fish, that we, we saw Pantheon having at least three assists to their name, which was really good to get them some money. And now they are 3 1 and 4. The Zach 3 0 oh, and 2. The Mordecai is a 2 0 oh, and 0. Oh. So, really, the rest of the team, aside from the bot lane, have so much gold on their pocket. They have built at least the 2k gold lead for the side of Misericordia has to be from these two lanes and the jungle. So very nice job from them, even though they lost the Drake to a futile thing. It's still one Drake for each team, so there's much that can be done. We are waiting to see it's going to be a Chemtech Soul. Is that is that what I see? Yeah, it is a Chemtech Soul. Chemtech back after a uh, brief retirement from the Rift due to some balancing issues. Is Miscreant gonna go in? Stretching Strike is going to pull Mami Nami back in. Nature's Grab is going to get the root three man on for Will Land. Futile thing coming in. Absolution is going to be used there oh, by wow. Breaches to pick the first kill up on the miss. Another as well. Miscreant will find one. The passive will come out. But overall, that's a three for one in favor of Ohio Wesley. And just when you thought Miss Cordia had the lead, they kind of hand it right back. Yeah, Nyla really popping off on that bot lane play. Very nice dodges. The encore from Mami Nami was really crucial to them as well. They're gonna take this turret down. Really nice for Owu. And with that, once again, Fish, they're just maintaining the game very even. But in the bot lane, Screeches, as I said, not only are they really building that advantage in kills now, they are very far ahead in CS and it's beginning to show because they, they've they had the Revenous Hydra for at least two or three backs now and it's just right now that Caitlyn got the Kraken Slayer to herself so the first Mythic for her took a while longer. They're going to try to collide on this one for Herald and we'll see which team is going to be on top of this. I think the Encore for Mami Nami is kind of what Ohio Wesley needs to wait for. It's still got about 25% of its cooldown left. King Kong Chrono going to go in. He's going to steal the Death Realm from Mordekaiser. Now he can Death Realm after Mordekaiser has to join somebody and make it a 2v2 down there if he really wants to. But instead it looks like a disengage. And what ult do you think King Kong should be looking for? So I talked about in the draft. There's a lot of good ones. He's taken the Ace in the hole a couple times. But what ult as we get into this late game? Do you think King Kong Chrono should be targeting as often as he can? I think I have to say uh, it's it's the death round, the Shadow Realm from Saintly Comic, the Door Boy with the ultimate as well to get the engage, to get the CC. And I think if there is a moment for Oru where they want to try to go for a split push or something similar, I think Silas can do that well once he's got many items. And having the Pantheon ulti might be very nice for them, so it's going to be something more situational. But definitely the Mordekaiser and the Maokai would be a good choice always for King Kong Chrono. I think, unfortunately, <laughs> the ace in the hole has been used almost on melee range <laughs> the times that it has been used, so not much of that big of a lead in in regards to how the ultimate can be played but in the bot lane they're going to collapse on oxen and i don't know if they can survive this one ghost gonna be used there by creatures there apotheos is gonna be used to try and pull his back and he tries to get tower rage but get shut down this nyla absolutely popping up miscreant runs in he's gonna have to pop the let's bounce nature grasp roaming down as well mommy Nami on the backside has the encore if they need it it looks like it'll just be a simple disengage. Look at those shields from the support and Ohio Wesley. And as you mentioned, the difference is that AD carry roll. And Creatures just obliterated the three in one Pantheon. We didn't even look like he looked like he had no kills at that point. How fast he died. <laughs> Oh, that is so true, Fish. And it was such a good bounty for Nyla as well. Not only did she get the money for herself, but she's got the 150 gold bounty on her name too. So very nice for Uru. Ohio Wesleyans building a good lead for this first match of the best of three. The kills are ve fairly even with the amount of CS the Cougars have been able to build on the blue side as well. They're finally creeping up back 
to the amount of gold the other team has. So, once again, very even. Ooh, King Kong Chrono does have the let's bounce for a potential team fight. I do think Misery Cordy of the Cougars can play around Saintly Comic. He is bodying Phoenix up in this top lane, already level 14, 176 CS. This Mordekaiser might be able to make some split pushing happen, and I don't know how many people can 1v1 him. As we rotate over towards our first Chemtech Dragon of the game, we do see Mordekaiser rotating down. Sion has the teleport, and we'll see if we get an all out Dragon Brawl here. It's trending in that direction. Oxen gonna jump in immediately. Here comes Mistrian on the back line. Huge five man encore! Going to come out, Creeps from the Apotheos is going to pick up one, looking for another one. It's Futile Thing who finds a second kill for the red team. King Kong Chrono now trying to get away, and Futile Thing with a double kill, looking to hop on to miss for maybe a third kill. What an absolutely fantastic played fight. He does pick that one up before running away, and also 4v5 the whole time, so Jim Phoenix never even bothered to come down, just simply looking <laughs> to push his leg topside. Yeah, but... Unfortunately, I was going to try to make a good analysis on this one. I was going to say, well, Cougars have not been on the lead on team fights because Sandly Comics, Sandly Comic hasn't come to the party, but now they have and they lost. <laughs> so that is not looking that great. But at least they have the nice macro knowledge to say, well, Sandly Comic, just go. Go do the Drake by yourself. You have the ability to do it. Uh, ultimate from Oxen is going to try to defend this turret. It's not, of course, it was going to fall. Oh, is it close? Oh, oh very close. They're going to go down. Oh, shielding. Very much a lot of damage consumed. Last hit is going to land from King Kong Chrono. But very nice from Mr. Ricardo Cougars to at least recognize that even though most of the team was down, that they could still get the buff for themselves. Oh, boy. I saw a flash there. I, I saw it. <laughs> We're always watching. We're always watching. You can't yes. sneak your flash. Your, your, your misclick flashes past us as King Kong Chrono now picks up the mid tower. What's off on the dope boy? Immediately gets jumped on by three members. Oh no, King Kong Chrono. He did not expect Oxen and Miscreant to be there. Classic slip shot going to be used. Oh, the stretching strike just misses, but kind of throw one away there in the mid lane as Ohio Wesley. Yeah, I think at this point, Fish, the one thing that Misericordia has to be looking for is the shutdown on the Wukong. A futile thing with four, uh, 10 out of 14 kill participation in the in the board. And that is going to be very, very nice if they get the shutdown on him. Right now, once again, still maintaining a nice equality between the teams. Still very balanced. Oxen might have found themselves in a bad spot. The stun gonna land, knock up. Oh, the young core is gonna hit three people. A futile thing Ooh. is coming in. Sion knocks them up too. And it's the tomb of Misericordia Cougars. Oh my gosh, you pointed out. Oxen thought, okay, okay, I don't have to worry. And then the triple encore into the triple Sion ult, <laughs> into the triple Cyclone for Futile Thing. They couldn't have planned it any better. That should be Baron. Yeah, I think this is just a send Baron. You do have Saintly Comic on the bottom side of the map. You have Miscreant hiding around, but five man Baron burn. This should be an easy one here for Ohio Wesley. It should be. Saintly Comic has TP. Miscreant is still there. They have used the vision. They have the blast going to jump over. 300, 3000 health. 250. Oh, it's not enough. They're not fast enough. They ripped that really nicely. So. Good job to Ohio Wesleyan. Knocked that one down pretty swiftly. So they would avoid any invades, any steals from the sneaky Zack. And still a good attempt from them. They're going to go down, of course. All the buffs are intact. And Ohio Wesleyan is trying to push for a late game finish. Do will the Phoenix teleport onto the bottom side of the map? just to try and stop Saintly Comic. But yeah, now as you mentioned, with the Baron, you can push at least two tier two towers in whatever lane. I'm curious if we'll get maybe a 1-3-1, maybe a 1-4, or if we'll just five-man jam it out in the mid lane. Right now, though, it looks like we're going to be using the Baron buff to secure our own jungle. So it doesn't really seem like Ohio Wesleyan is too worried about this game. Is this Baron <laughs> not really being put to much use? <laughs> 
Uh, first person to actually get to a lane was Nyla there. She pushed a little bit also. Leaving and going to the jungle. I don't really understand why be so fearful at this point. They have the advantage on the numbers of the team, on the on the items and on the buffs. So as you said, fish is definitely the best time for them to try and push. A futile thing, trying to get something in the top lane. I well, it looks like right now they've decided to go for the 131 as you mentioned. I hope they focus on this one because they can definitely take down the second tier of the mid lane. And opening up the base is the first step to getting close to the victory. They do have two tile thing up in the top lane, so with dragon spawning in a minute, I'll be a little bit careful of how long you want to stay up there. Does look like the Bear Empowered Cannon Minion from long range will take care of that turret along with King Kong Chrono. A few tile things just trying to push here as well. We do get a lot of pings coming out. Maybe they want to try and sandwich all of the four members of the red team here. But it doesn't look like anyone wants to pull the trigger, so they'll just let those two Empowered uh, Cannon Minions fire away. Slowly took down that turret. Now they want to go in. A flash from Nami. Nami immediately going to get caught out there. Nice two-man on for Nature's Grab. Going to be used from the Silas. King Kong Chrono going to dash on the back line. Picks up Mist. Now 1v1 against Oxen. Creatures, meanwhile, with the Apotheosis, trying to sustain in the death realm against this Mordekaiser. And doing a fantastic job staying alive. Life stealing, but cannot quite finish the job. And now it's up to Phoenix. Multiple low health members here. And finally, Futile Thing gonna roam down. He was top the entire time. Will he dash <laughs> in for the Cyclone? Jumps in on the Saintly Comet. First sort of Cyclone charge gonna be used, but they're just too tanky right now for Misery Accordia, and they win that fight three to two. I think at this point, Fish, a Futile Thing should have just stayed in the top lane. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they took so long to come down to join the fight that it was just better for them to take that turret just uh, expose the inhibitor and rotate for the dragon as they're doing right now. So I'd say they are at least one or two minutes behind in regards to that rotation. But of course, still happy to see that having the advantage that they're going for this buff. Zack is still miles away from the pit, so they are able to get a lot of damage onto the Drake as fast as they can. Oxen is around, though, boy, as well. But not having a smite is going to be very difficult to try and steal. Yeah, not sure. Oh, and at least oh. oh, okay. Oh, that Ooh. was so close, though. That was so close because it was almost resetting. Oh my god. That was much closer than it needed to be. Your breath. That felt like <laughs> a free one. Miscreant again. I think maybe one for the back just to get the full health, so he did not have a chance to steal. Oh, Mommy Nami's gonna walk right into Oxen and into Doughboy. That is a dead support. Miscreant. Let me quite land the elastic slingshot. You have Saintly Comic over the wall. Nature's Grasp coming in. Root's going to land on the King Kong Chrono. He will potentially be dead here as well. There's no chance for a Kingslayer to sustain him. Minions are pushing in mid, but that's not a problem right now for Misery Accordia. They're trying to finish this fight. Creatures hanging out on the back line. Cyclone Charge 2 going to be popped. There's kind of a miscommunication. Creatures never wanted to go in. They'll pick up Phoenix and... That one went ugly for Ohio Wesleyan, <laughs> and Misery Cordia picks up three. He really did. Three people down for none in a very unnecessary play. Of course, we saw Mami Nami getting caught. That's fine. It happens to support sometimes. They have yep. to expose themselves to get the warding done, to get the wards cleared. And unfortunately, they went down. You really didn't have to try to fight that one, especially giving away your mid laner, then giving away your top laner. That's going to be harsh for them. But... As we can see from the rotation from Misericordia, Cougars, I think they aren't as eager to be aggressive. I think they're still a little fearful of how much damage Ohio can do. So right now, I don't think it was that big of a problem. Definitely was bad because of the shutdowns. I don't remember if there was a shutdown for any of them. There's still the 650 for a futile thing on the Wukong. So the one bounty that they have been looking for and hunting ever since the 15 minutes it hasn't been down yet and with baron spawning in 15 i think that's the moment from sericordia oh to try God. to turn this around oh again the mami nami is unfortunately as you said supports trying to front line toward 
That Pantheon Maokai combo is just so powerful against a squishy like a Seraphine. Baron is up. Even in the 4v5, Mystery Cordia doesn't want to pull the trigger. Nature's Grasp from Doughboy going to come out. Grand Starfall picked up here by King Kong Chrono, and he is not going to be able to Starfall anywhere. He's going to be forced to use that Zhonya's Cyclone going to be used. Teleport coming in from the Mordekaiser. Is he going to get there in time? Oxen and King Chrono oh, dueling. No. Oxen goes down. Saintly Comic trying to hop on with the Death Realm and at least pick off Reaches here, and he will. Meanwhile, oh, King Kong Chrono uh, does take out Miss Saintly Comic, trying to run away. If he can get that shield, he can turn this fight. Huge shield here kills Phoenix. Futile Thing trying to hop onto him. And they get the kill as the Blast Cone goes off. It's an ace for Ohio Wesleyan, and that should be game here. Yeah, this looks like it is with the respawn timer in the 20 seconds. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, it do, I think it just looks like a Baron on this one. As you said, the time is only on 20 seconds. Nothing as huge as the 40 seconds that we saw recently with the players over Ohio Wesleyan. So just the red team rotationing for the, the top pass for the Baron is going to be enough. It is, once again, the second Baron that they're going to catch in the game. So we hope that now seeing <laughs> that they are very far ahead, at least 5k gold and a lot of towers down on the side of Misericordia Cougars, that they feel confident that they can go in and take the game down. It's just something that we understand is very common with players in the Navigators League, in the Navigators rank. They are a little scared of throwing the game away with a big base rush. <laughs> I'll, I'll live it by almost anyone, maybe even up to, until you hit the Ledges division. Ending the yeah. game, I think, is the hardest thing we've seen it at all levels. We've seen games go 60 minutes, and we're just like, no, we could have been done 30 minutes ago. What are we doing? But I'm with you. <laughs> we did get a weird teleport there from Phoenix. I'm not sure why he teleported into the Baron. Keep an eye on maybe if that will become useful or not. It does look like for now, Ohio Wesleyan is just saying, all right, we got the Baron. We've got the 6,000 gold lead. Let's just take a third dragon just because maybe look for a pick here <laughs> but i mean this the, these baron buffs have been uh they've just been circling <laughs> around without a lot of value yeah <laughs> very interesting to say the least the least fish and i really hope for the sake of ohio wesley that they're not going for a long run of a soul buff they're just gonna go for miscreant on this one tiny little jump still gonna get caught by the chains they have to pop the ultimate to go away and at least that's nice considering that they look to be going for the buff they're pinging around the pit so not having that ultimate from zach is gonna be useful they still have their smite though there's no vision from the blue side so that might be a little difficult from zach here it is it's secured very nicely very swiftly at least they are confident about how they are playing the objectives that said <laughs> let's have a look at how much these two champions have pushed the top path because it's already 30 percent and it's building more and more advantage for the blue team yeah, this is a great job by Saintly and Oxen, though they might have unfortunately bit off more than they could chew. A great three-man slow there from Saintly Comic with that Rhyolize. Now trying to bait off breaches here. Probably going to use the Death Room at some point. It's a fantastic shield. We are going to see Miscreant go in there as well. Unfortunately, Miscreant and Saintly Comic will fall, and that will most likely do it here in game number one between these two teams, Ohio Wesley and Looks like that will be the double, sorry, triple kill, excuse me, that they need to be able to pick up a game one win. They'll pad their stats. Miss will be the next target. King Kong Chrono will pull it off. Oxen, what do you got? A death with the... Another ace in the hole stolen by this Silas. Didn't quite think we'd see that many stolen. The good one will go over to Ohio Wesley here when it's all said and done. It is so funny that we talked about what were the ultimates that King, Cro King Kong Chrono would definitely be stealing and then Ace in the Hole was definitely the most used fish. That is very funny to see. And I'm glad that finally they managed to close up this game because I think 
as analysts, yeah, as analysts, we know there were a couple of opportunities where they could have done that earlier. But nevertheless, they still maintained the victory. But I was a little worried with that split push, though. Yeah, the, I mean, as we talked about, the Baron buffs basically got no value. Maybe I think one or two towers eventually pushed. And really, at the end of the day, it came down to, as you pointed out, about 10, 15 minutes in. Creatures just got so far ahead that Nyla absolutely destroyed, which I will say that Nyla was the perfect comp, or perfect pick into that full melee comp. That ult for Nyla gives her the healing, gives her teammates shields when she does the damage in that big cone. And they just couldn't do anything about it. We'll have to see. Can Misery Accordia tie the series? Or does Ohio Wesleyan work out the small kinks and make this a 2-0 sweep here in our Navigators Mid-East? We'll take a break, and we'll have Game 2 coming up right after this. Oh, that is very funny. <laughs> I'm going to be right back just a second.
Welcome back into the NECC on the NECC2 channel here. We are in the middle of a Navigators mini showdown. This is Ho-Chan here for our first game of the evening. The Umu, or Ohio Wesleyan Onyx, picked up game one. Took a little longer, maybe so chan than you and I thought, but they got the job done at the end of the day. Misery Cordia, the Cougars, had some ups and downs. It was really close there for a while, just couldn't close the job. So we'll see if we've got a 2-0 sweep or if the Cougars have a game three in mind. Yeah, um, Fish, I think looking at what Mr. Cota Cougars had to show us on this last match, I think they can do more. We we saw that Mr. Cota Cougars had a one game, even though they lost in the best of three last week. So maybe we'll see a game three scenario for tonight. Who knows? We're going to see what the teams are going to pick in the draft that's going to come up very shortly. But what was... In, in your perspective, Fish, the one thing that had um, Owu on the lead in this last match? I think it was really the amount of AoE ultimates that they channeled together against what was effectively a four melee cop. We saw it where they landed a triple Scion ult into a triple Wukong ult, absolutely obliterated three members. That set them up for Baron, and that was kind of what started that snowball. Plus, you had the Nyla, whose ult is fantastic when everyone's grouped up on her, and that was really what it came down to. I think the team comp for Misericordia, I don't know if it was comfort picks, I don't know if it was a certain strategy, but those four melee into Wukong, Scion, Nyla, and the Encore. I mean, we saw a five-man Encore, a four-man Encore. It just did not work. I'd like to see them get some more range. I mean, as you mentioned in our first draft, right, an APC would be a perfect match. I think the Pantheon, while it was a good attempt and started strong, probably if it was a range character, that might have that game could have gone a different way. I think the main thing in, in regards to that matchup in the mid lane, as you mentioned, Fish, is the the Pantheon had the advantage in the beginning. But as you said, he's AD, he's a melee champion. And while the other teams are going to start scaling, we saw the Nyla just annihilating, haha, <laughs> pun intended, the rest <laughs> of the team. And it was just too much for them. Right now, we have the draft already on our screen. On the one side, we have Misericordia and the other Owu. Oh, the first picks are already coming into play. Darius is one of them. Darius and Amumu, I think they work out pretty well together. Shogaf, I haven't seen this void bad boy in a while. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Shogath. I think that Darius Shogath matchup will be interesting. I I don't know what the Caitlyn's doing there, especially since they've already drafted that. I don't think that's jungle Caitlyn. Um I'm almost fairly certain we'll have to see if we have to remake or not. The Annie is an interesting one, right? We were talking how the Annie had been banned last game. It had been so long since we'd seen it. And I like the fact that Oxen, yeah, I was going to say, it did look like maybe somebody just clicked on the wrong button, so we will get a remake there on the draft. But I think the Annie is a great choice. I think having an APC for Oxen is going to be fantastic. The other thing, if you look at the bands. Nyla and Silas both banned away, and so maybe they're going to force Ohio Wesley to play just an entirely different comp, and that will make them maybe make some interesting choices when we get into that draft, besides the choke end, which, as we said, is already kind of an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I think the main thing for me, which is definitely a fun fact, well, very obvious fun fact, is that since we, we saw in the draft, I don't think that was on screen already, so a little sneak peek, that... Mami Nami is actually going to play Nami in this matchup. So I'm very interested to see how they're going to play because it's so, it was so great to see the Seraphine ultis. They were very well lined up. The timing mm. was excellent. And with Nami, you can do fairly similar things because you have yeah. that ulti projectile into a straight line. It's a little larger, this one, and it knocks people up instead of just getting them charmed. So I think it's fairly similar what she can do. She's going to have the healing as well. And we're not going to spoil the rest of the draft, <laughs> but the, the Annie, as you mentioned, it definitely was a targeted ban from Owu in the last match. So mm -hmm. to, to think that it, it is available this time around on the hands of Oxen might be the one thing that can turn things to their advantage. We said that an APC would be super important. Maybe they don't have that big of a pull on APCs and any is the one to be able to make that happen. So we'll see if that is the case. I love the Darius, I love the Amumu. And on the other side, well, we'll see what's going to come up on screen. Yeah, I think the Darius into the Cho'Gath is a very scary matchup for Owu because Saintly Comic 
had definitely dominated in terms of CS, in terms of a basically early game control. He dominated Phoenix. Unfortunately, as we talked about, that Mordekaiser from game one wasn't in a lot of fights. If Darius gets ahead, he starts throwing out some Noxus Guillotine, starts picking up some resets. This could be very scary. There is your correct jungler, the Rangar, which <laughs> I don't know into a Mubu Darius Annie if Rangar is a great choice. He's very squishy, and if he gets stunned at all, he's just going to fall over. Very interesting indeed, because as we have the information from the draft, the Rengar was the last pick for Oruwu. So as you said, something a little, <laughs> not going to say questionable, but interesting in regards to choosing something that is most likely going to get countered. We're finishing up the bans for the, sec for the second phase. Uh, Kale and Mordekaiser are going to be next on the red side. Sion and Wukong, so very, very targeted picks for the Cougars in regards to what unexpected the last match and is azir is it okay there we go <laughs> the blitzcrank to wrap up in the bot lane haven't seen this mechanical beast in a while as well but kaisa and blitzcrank can do some great things together with the knock up with the repositioning while zeri and nami can be such incredible powerhouses in the late game so we have a little bit of each for late and early game that can scale well on both sides so we'll see who's going to get the upper hand fish. I think the interesting thing here, we do get the uh, the little bit of the advantage. We can see who is on Misericordia. They actually have gone with some subs. They've moved Doughboy up from support over to the jungle side. And then Meat and Cheesy and Sketchy Pepperoni, kind of like a weird pizza combo down there in the bottom lane. They're actually <laughs> going to be your new... I, that has to be that has to be like a synergistic name, right? You're not gonna be meat and cheesy to be. and sketchy pepperoni, but they'll have a new AD carry and a new support. So I'll be <laughs> curious to see how that goes against the uh, very aggressive bot lane we saw from Ovu. <laughs> well, uh, uh, another fun fact for the stream: I had pizza before the broadcast, so there you go. More pizza coming into play. What kind? I, what kind? Mm, it was meat feast. Okay, all right. That all meat and cheesy, just like the guy. It's like the name. Exactly. Exactly. I was preparing. I was preparing. I was actually screaming with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but away from the pizza, what do you think? What do you think of the the team cop here for the side of Misericordia going with? I think more of a traditional style in this game too, with the APC, with a more standard support, if you will, with the Blitzcrank. What do you think of their team comp here for Game 2 as they look to tie this series? I think in regards to the type of damage, as you mentioned, Fish, I think I prefer this much better. As you said, you have the APC, you have Kaiser, which can do the hybrid damage. Even if you don't build into AP, she's always going to deal some AP damage because of her passive. You have nice CC from the support from the jungler. You have insane true damage with Darius and his just presence as a front line is going to be very crucial to them which which was something that we felt like we they lacked a little bit in the last game on the side of Uwu I think they are much squishier of a composition so that might play against them in the late game but if Zeri gets a lead, we know what she can do, especially with Anami by her side. Echo as well can do incredible plays in the mid lane. Um, Chogath, I think, is going to be the mystery in here because I think for Renga, it's either he's going to snowball or he's just going to be a little kitten and meow across the map instead of ripping everyone's faces. So. To me, the mystery will be sure, Gath, and how that's going to play against the Darius. As you said, it, it might rely on the presence from the jungler. And if we see the Amumu being very active in the top lane, this will be easy peasy lemon squeezy for Darius. Yeah, I think I think if Rengar wants to be the uh, face ripping kitten and not the meowing kind, he's going to have to get early ganks. Amumu, a classic, has to farm to level six. Anything before then, ganking-wise, is very, very weak outside of a bandage toss stun. So maybe we see a bit of a counter jungle from the side of Rengar and Ohio Wesleyan. And, and we actually, it was very similar to a game that I had last week where the team comp for Ohio Wesleyan is just expensive, right? Echo wants gold. Sari wants gold. Rengar wants gold. Everybody needs, like, four kills to be 
really confident in that mid game. So they're going to have to find ways to snowball because if one of them or two of them falls behind, Ohio Wesleyan, as you said, they might have a meowing Rengar and, you know, an Echo without his Hextech technology just kind of walking <laughs> around saying, uh, hey, I can't really help. Good luck. Next time. This is very odd comp for Ohio Wesleyan after winning game one, I think. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think they're all very greedy. They all like my precious with the gold and they really need all the XP to themselves. So it's going to be very, be very crucial for Oru to micromanage how they're going to split that XP, how Rengar is going to use the vision and the communication with the team to be able to go onto the sides of the enemy jungle where Mumu is not at because I don't think it's a good idea for them to go for a 1v1 because it can go very wrong if someone turns up to help the Amumu. So I think it's going to be very important for Oru the that they manage a nice um, conversation between themselves to be able to know where to be and when to be so they can take the full um, bonus from the champions that they have on the table. Kick off game two between Misericordia and Ohio Wesleyan. Does look like scoreboard is a bit backwards. It was Ohio Wesleyan that won game one, not Misericordia, but it's already starting off poorly for Ohio Wesleyan. It's King Kong Chrono gonna walk into <laughs> Rocket Fist. It's a five man first blood here for the side of Misericordia. There we go, and we're starting off grand for Misericordia Cougars. Very nice boost to their self-esteem. Uh, first blood onto the mid lane. We saw King Kong Chrono being so good in the last match, and that's going to help the blue team very, very much. We see Ranga on the same side of the map as the Amumu, one on the blue, one on the red, so they might face each other. There's not much vision aside from the blue ward in the river whereas the red team has a lot covering the jungle and we'll see if that's going to be the one thing they were aiming for to get that ringer ahead that thing gonna pick up that red buff yeah this might be a level two ringer gank as we talked about ringer needs to get ahead but this blitzcrank i mean for sketchy pepperoni again a substitute for misericordia Already paying its dividends. I think the one downside of Blitzcrank <laughs> is if you fall behind, he loses a lot of value because obviously he has to start fights. So it is important that Misericordia keeps the lead as long as they can. And that'll keep that uh, sketchy pepperoni out down there with meat and cheesy. Absolutely fantastic Ooh. duo bot lane. Nice and healthy. And no Rengar invade and no level 2 gank. That is very interesting for the side of Ohio Wesley. Well, they're tr trying to go for what they seem to be doing in the last game, which is a little more slower paced. But top lane is not going for slower pace. Sendly, Comic, and Phoenix brawling around, both down to around 30% health. So they're going to be very aggressive. The difference is Darius only has the, the Doran sword and the corrupted potion on the hands of the Cho'Gath is going to help this beast a lot especially since both jungles are on the bottom side of the map there's not going to be any ganks anytime soon especially until the level four so maybe they're going for something in the bot lane said oh nice Ooh. hook hook into the power fist mommy nami forced the flash it's not gonna matter the ignite secures the kill meat cheesy did flash but the ignite was the one that picked up the kill phoenix and saintly comic both battling them out five what? stacks of the passive that is a dead skeleton void beast chogath <laughs> come on if you're gonna pick chogath and you're not rocking oh. gentleman chogath oh. i'm gonna be disappointed in you phoenix i'm very honest I saw a nice dodge there <laughs> from creatures and this uh that loss right there in that 1v1 that could almost kind of determine this top lane soap chain because it was kind of a race to six who gets their execute first and if saintly comic wins i think he's gonna snowball out of control that is so oh. true oh we have a was it a steal oh, no. it was a steal from a futile thing they have the scuttlecraft vision they have to flash away but i i totally agree with you on the top lane you had the 1v1 so successful for the blue team and also, the amount of CS that the blue team is ahead, Sendly Comic on 17 and Shogath on 10, 
they're still coming back to lane. They haven't, they don't have a TP, so they have run back. Phoenix has used the TP, but bot lane is gonna get heavy real soon with this big four man gank. They're still just kind of posturing around right now in Saintly Comic and Phoenix, and those bleeds are starting to stack up, though. It does look like. Due to the lack of teleport, Phoenix might actually hit five or hit six first. The problem is, Cho'Gath usually looking to feast minions, gain those six stacks of passive health that you can gain from minions, as opposed to looking for a kill on uh, Darius with that Noctis Guillotine. As everyone who's played League of Legends knows, he's just looking to dunk right away. <laughs> he's looking for it right now. Not level six, it might not matter. Here comes Doughboy. Phoenix gonna flash away. Those bleeds are gonna kill him. Doughboy secures it with the bandage toss. And it's two kills already in the top lane for Misericordia. Yeah, and Doughboy coming back from the support into the jungle is gonna be able to do a lot on this one on the Amumu. Very nice. Pressure is gonna be allowing Darius to get some platings. Now they decide to go back to base, be a little more safe. I would have definitely taken some platings there, especially when you know your enemy doesn't have TP, but you do what you think is best. That is no problem at all. Ranga has pulled a lot of warding in the in the river. One, okay, I thought that pink was a ward in the blue. It is not. It was just a pink, but it, it really shows that the red team is having more control in regards to vision. But the bot lane doesn't even care. Sketchy Pepperoni is really going for that aggressive posture. And those hooks on Mami Nami, especially when they have such a small health bar as this little sushi. Oh, you can see Sketchy Pepperoni looking for a grab. Not quite able to find one. This creatures and Mami Nami using that minion wave to the best of their ability. We have had our first dragon spawn, though nobody seems too interested and i think at the six minute mark so chin the big thing right now this amumu already has one kill and one assist the futile thing has nothing to his name saintly comic has hit level six as well as the chokath here comes this rengar they're looking for something on the mean cheesy and sketchy pepperoni heal already going to be used the nami bottle is going to land a stun but a nice trip on the creatures into oh. power range forced to flash away ignites traded off on the 80 carries Ooh. Everybody walks away. Creatures with just a sliver. Yeah, 10 health on that ADC. That's not going to be that much of a comfort zone. They have to really run away on this one. Oh, they they have not. They're just popping the potions. The boy is around. The bandage toss my hit. The hook my hit. And oh. there he goes. The flash and the hook is going to land. It's going to be a very quick kill onto oh. that AD, down to that Nami. Meat and cheesy so close to getting eliminated as well and then the top lane has been a feast of dodges on those ruptures very nicely done saintly comic phoenix out of mana chugging through that corrupting potion does get a little bit mana back every time he kills a minion but that might be his concern right now the darius stacks are coming <laughs> phoenix trying to run away one more what? stack the flash forward the dunk oh, oh. the oh. bleed should kill oh. him Hey. It's way less exciting than the dunk kill, but it's the same effect for Saintly <laughs> Comet. Well, the dunk kill didn't happen, but the anticipation of the bleed was still there, so I'm still very happy about it. I'm I'm still waiting yet to see Oxen popping off on this Annie, the one champion that was very interestingly banned in the previous match. Definitely a targeted ban for Oxen. So I want to see that any popping off. I want to see those Tibbers falling on everyone's heads and Misericordia Cougars making their way onto a game three. Right now, they already have a lead for more than 4K plus. Oh, that very closely hit the tail on their fish. And it would be another kill on Tsunami. Very unfortunate for. Oh, woo. but what is not is that they had priority on this Drake. The Mumu was on the other side of the map. They're going to guarantee their Herald should the red team not transition. So a trade is a trade. I'm really curious what Doughboy is going to build here. We're going to get a Hex Flash what? over the... Oh. <laughs> over the... Uh, yee, yeah. yee, yee, yee. <laughs> <laughs> it tried. I think as soon as Creatures and Mommy Nami ran away, Sketchy Pepperoni changed his plan, but... I'm very curious because Doughboy first item to Blasting Rod on a Mumu, which is usually not something you see. I don't know if this is going to be more of an aggressive Mumu. Maybe he just felt since he was ahead, he wanted that extra <laughs> AP damage. I'm, 
I've never seen that before. He did finish his boots, but something to keep an eye on if Doughboy maybe gets a little bit too creative with his build as opposed to just going the standard uh, tanky Amumu build. <laughs> I think I saw that wand being baked around the first kill that Amumu got. Doughboy looking for the second one to their name. They're gonna go in silenced on to Sainly Comic. The Rupture's gonna miss. It is the second time that it does on the gank and unfortunately the dunk is gonna fall. And this time around there's no bleeding to count the seconds until your fate. It's just going to be a one second blow and you're out. The top lane has gone I think the exact way that Misery Cordia planned for it to go. You get Again, Saintly Comic kind of dominated Phoenix early on in that last matchup as well, but the Mordekaiser just didn't have that oomph to kill the Scion. <laughs> they take the Scion off the table, they put him on Darius, and Darius has absolutely kind of taken over this game. 3 0 and 2, 75 CS. Ooh, nice bait on the Hex Flash there for Sketchy Pepperoni, but the, the uh, Rocket Grab did miss, so didn't look as cool as I think he hoped it would. <laughs> well, they're still using that skin on the Blitzkrieg, so they re they look really cool still. <laughs> it is. I, I, my, my favorite Blitzkrieg skin is still definitely not Blitzkrieg, because if it's not Blitzkrieg, who is it? <laughs> who is it? <laughs> who could it be? Just like, who's going to take over this game for Ohio Wesley? And I think it's the question. So, Chad, is again this Rengar 0-0, oh oh, the Hex Flash Rocket Grab just misses. Somebody needs to find a kill right now for Ohio Wesleyan because this game is getting away. It's a 6k gold difference, by the way, at 11 minutes, mainly thanks to a really well farming by Oxen and by Stanley Comic in the mid and top lane. Oh, sketchy pepperoni is going to get jumped on here. Futile thing trying to get in range. Mami Nami is going to land a fantastic bubble. This should be the first kill of the game as everybody's down there and Creatures picks up the first one. Very nice for the ADC. Lovely conversion of gold for three other members in form of assists. And the final blow for Zeri. Very nicely done for Ohio West. And they're converging into the mid lane. No one to be found. Just a lovely, juicy <laughs> wave to be pushed in. There's still the plating. Just again, almost just two minutes to, to the end. And for them to disappear. So... There's still time to take some of them. I believe none of them so far, aside from the top lane, have been taken. And Saintly Comic grants the first destroyed turret of the game for Misericordia Cougars, cementing further and further on the almost 7k gold lead and advantage in many, many things around, across the map. And not a single plate, as you said, has fallen anywhere on the map for either team. Except Darius has gotten all five on the top lane with some help from the Rift Herald, of course, that was dropped by Doughboy. And that is going to be the massive, massive concern for Ohio Wesley. And is this Darius has doubled the CS of Phoenix. Now, Darius, of course, susceptible to kiting, but you don't have an Ash. You don't have a great amount of slows on your team as Mami Nami flashed over the wall. Oh, great rocket no. grab by Sketchy Pepperoni. There's Tibbers. And there's a kill for Oxen. Meat and Cheesy just couldn't quite get there in time. And Nami <laughs> Nami suffered that fate a couple times in game one and meets it again here, just trying to ward it. Chrono going to go in. Parallel Convergence is going to miss. Doughboy is there. Bandage toss one misses. Rexar hanging out in stealth. Gonna hop on top. Curse the sad mummy. Gonna land on the boat. Chrono ship going to be used. It's not gonna save him though. As a flash forward, not enough to hit the hook on the futile thing, and he should get away as he lands a root with the empower bullet strike on a doughboy. I love to see the aggression coming from Scratchy Pepperoni. Nicely um, no vision hook onto the Nami. I think they, they put the ward afterwards or had they wa had they warded that before? Well anyway it was really cool. <laughs> it looks really nice. Unfortunately the the flash was wasted and that didn't get them away from dodge. Nice presence from Misericordia Cougars onto the Drake. It's going to be their first one of the game. Should the Ranger not steal it? They are around the corner. They don't have ulti, so they're not going to be able to go in stealth. But they might even do something and ended up and end up falling for it. No, they don't. 
don't want to risk it. It's just better to give this one away. It's going to have a... It's going to be a Hexdexel for the rest of the game. The portals have spawned. And gates are going to be able to take you so long into the map. And a futile thing, King Kong Chrono is going to love what that can manage them to do. I think really it's great for Ohio Wesley because they're going to be able to find ways to get to this Darius Saintly comic trying to chase down Phoenix. Five stacks of the pass and we're just waiting for the slam. Okay, hey, we don't, even, this, okay. don't okay. even use the dunk this time as Sketchy Pepperoni also picks one up. Just really killing my vibe at the top of my <laughs> soap channel. What the dunk kills? <laughs> Oh, it feels bad, man. Well, we do, what we do want as well is... Oh, look at that flashy. Okay, okay. Showing in some skill, a few tell things. Showing some emotes as well. I think everybody is just trying to demonstrate all their abilities. But unfortunately for the red team that is trying to go for a sweep and not looking very great on this one. Almost 8k gold behind MU is going to get the Herald for themselves, probably popping in a mid lane, and that's going to be two outer turrets down, should they do so. And the amount of kills and gold that the blue team has been able to converge is incredible, and it really shows how much they can take of this game just in the mid stages, and let's hope for their sake they get to finish it before the 35-40 minute mark. I don't know if with this, I don't know if this Darius is gonna allow us to reach that 35 uh -huh. minute mark. He is because who who takes him on right now, Swift Chen? I mean, 4 0 and 2 already has his mythic item working on his second. There's only two mythic items done on the side of Ohio Wesley, and I think Saintly Comic should just stay split pushing. I think he could have done the same thing on Mordekaiser and he kinda got a little confused, but if if this Darius just split pushes I think this could be an easy win here for Missouri, Missouri Cordia here in game two. We'll see how that's going to go because I definitely agree with you there, Fish. I think the problem from Missouri Cordia in the management of that Mordekaiser was, okay, we're pushing. No, we're not pushing. We're joining in the party. No, we're joining. No, we're not. And then it just became a definite mess, a clown fiesta, and it does not help that big juggernaut of a Mordekaiser to be able to shine you either participate in all the fights or you go for the split pushes and unfortunately that split just made them be halfway every single time oxen might be caught up in a bad spot oh no he does have the tibbers unfortunately did miss the stun up with the tibbers but it was still enough combo with that flash to get away a great rocky grab over the wall on to King Kong Chrono, was just simply trying to finish off the angry bear and instead met his early demise. Oh my goodness, Oxen, I don't know how he didn't get caught. He ends up getting a kill for his team, which is absolutely wild. <laughs> it really is, Fish. I think uh, you, you mentioned that there was no stun there, but it was just so nicely executed, the, the bear into the flash, because I think he just probably dodged... Uh, the, the net from a futile thing, allowing them to escape, probably hit the, the, the tippers instead. And that was lovely to get them away from certain death. And then the the, the rocket grab is just amazing from Sketchy Pepperoni has been landing uh, incredible hooks all throughout this match and really showing that sometimes mid game substitutions are the best goal. Sometimes, especially early on in the season, both these teams, I think, they have, you know, bigger than five-man rosters, so it's always good to say, hey, let's see what works, what doesn't work, and this lineup, at least, with Doughboy in the jungle, meat and cheesy and sketchy pepperoni, their new bot lane working out very well. The bot lane, five, one, and six combined, and now they're going to jump on a few top thing and look to pad those stats even more as Oxen picks up the kill. Tibbers is back on the map. The cooldown on that Annie ult is so short. It's up <laughs> almost every fight. It's absolutely insane. And, you know, I don't know what you do. Is that a bear dressed as a bunny? Yeah, that is. That's, yes. that's never what you want to see. It's Alice in Wonderland themed. It's so cute. 
<laughs> oh, poor creature is, is definitely caught up between a rock and a hard place. They're gonna ulti spend there are uh, the cooldown. Mm -mm. Sometimes you just do it as a panic effort, and maybe you should have just accepted your death. Said, okay, fair enough. <laughs> you got this one. I'll just respawn, and next time I'm back, I'm gonna have my my ultimate. Unfortunately, not the case. Second, Drake is gonna go for Misericordia, and they're pushing for another fight. They're gonna get a great curse to sad moment. Gonna land on the two. Saintly Comic is there. Did not get the dunk kill, so no reset. This Chrono Shift is gonna be able to pick up a kill on the sketchy pepperoni. King Kong Chrono trying to get away. Not quite able to. Mommy Nami will fall. It will be a 4 4 1 as Preaches was not in that fight. And Misery Cordia now up 13,000 gold at the 20 minute mark here in game two and looking well on their way to extending this series. Yes, they are. I think Fish. Well, what you mentioned that maybe they just picked something that they were comfortable with in the for com comfortable with in the first game. I back to differ. I think in the first game they tried to make a solid comp, and in the draft, in the drawing board, it looked solid. It looked well rounded. But then in the game, they didn't perform as well as they're doing right now. And we know that any was a targeted ban. They're able to use it now, doing really well. Four zero and six. The rest of the team as well, changing the the lanes, no boy in the jungle, the, sub, the, the subs coming in for the bot lane has been working so well that it really looks super promising for a game three for Misericordia Cougars. And not only that, I think if they maintain something similar to that in the, in the third game, should they get this victory, is the way to go. And now they're going to hop on to Phoenix and really look to maybe put this game away. Great slow on to Darius, but a fantastic grip. I don't think Sketchy Pepperoni has missed many grips. I don't think we're seeing mm -hmm. like 80%. It's been phenomenal. And this Blitzcrank has been a huge reason why they won. You mentioned the substitutes, but nothing against Meat and Cheesy, who's been fantastic on the Kaisa. But this Blitzcrank has enabled everything since minute one when he's <laughs> yeah. a massive first blood. So true, Fish, so true. And they're gonna very closely to guaranteeing the secure on the Baron buff as well. There we go. Nice smite. Oxen hitting the bush. Mummy Nami might be the one to get caught. Oh, that burn was so quick that I didn't even think Kaiser was gonna get an assist. Tibber's stun with Ludens. The absolute insane damage. I'm right there with you, Mommy Nami. Just went down in a snap of our fingers. And now I think this is going to be very telling of Misery Cordia because, I mean, we're almost at a 20,000 gold lead here, Sokjin. This is Misery Cordia's game to lose. Now let's see how they play the rest of this game. And Saintly Comic and Ox are going to get jumped on. Another fantastic grab on the creatures to secure the kill. He simply cannot miss. Phoenix will go down. And let, I'd like to see them finish this game before the 25 minute mark. That to me, so Chan would say that this Miss Cordia, Misery Cordia team is firing on all cylinders. Any longer, and it's starting to get a little iffy on if they know how to finish games. <laughs> and we really don't want to see that happen again. We got a little worried. We saw two Baron buffs being. I don't know, 20% well executed, 20% well utilized. Whoa, well, has been well utilized as those hooks on the Darius. Look at that dunk. We're going to have another reset, possibly. Fish King Kong Chrono is not looking oh. to be in the best place. They oh. have to use that distortion away and they end up dying in here. Double Tipper Sun as well. And that, that could be game with Baron pushing in. It's only Phoenix in alive for the next 10 seconds or so and i think this will be game they will break the 25 minute mark that i set for them in misericordia a fantastic game to draft some fantastic subs as well and they are going to tie this series up and take us to a game three why, 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 please, why, why, why would you do that to me? Oh, oh no, me. they left me the cheesy alone! Oh no, Sketchy Pepperoni, why would you do that? Oh, they used the portal before the ADC. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Saka. I'm dying. Oh no. 
That is disastrous. I cannot believe. Uh oh. Oh, we were voting for the less than 24 minutes, less than 25 minutes. Oh, fish. What has become of this? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> well, it looks like it might be closer to 26 minutes, but I think they're still going to pick up the kill. <laughs> The win here, I mean, they have sketchy pepper, and really the only mistake he made, as you said, clicking the portal before the ADC. I mean, it is bleak, but a thousand gold shut <laughs> down onto a Rengar is definitely not what you want to do when you're looking to close out this game. Wait, was it a, th an a thousand yeah, bounty a thousand. on the Kaisa, and yeah. she still says she still has yeah. a 700 what in the world my goodness well i hope that this squad is really going to wrap <laughs> this one now another hook lands and the poor kitty has been obliterated it should just be a matter of time Michi's is gonna go in with the kaisa all pick up one it's all up to creatures here it's a double kill for oxen Sketchy Pepperoni misses maybe only his fourth or fifth hook of the entire game, but now with the clean ace, this will be GG just past the 25 minute mark. Misery Concordia will not only tie up this series, but with an exclamation point, so Chan, 22,000 gold difference at the end of that game. And. <laughs> I don't know how to feel going into game three, because game one was really close, game two was not. What are your takeaways from an absolute brutal beatdown <laughs> this recording? Gosh, it really was, Fish. It was devastating. What a snowball, a steamroll from the Cerecordia Cougars. Mm -hmm. I think the main thing for them was the change in the roster. I think it worked out perfectly. It felt like the players were more used to the champions they were using. They felt more comfortable. They felt much more confident. And I think that brought the team really together to be able to get those plays really on board. And... I don't think that Ohio Wesleyan was expecting that to be the case because they had a pre fairly even game. But uh, uh, from the point where they started getting into the lead, they maintained the lead. Mm -hmm. And I think now, I hope that Ohio Wesleyan recognizes that a game can be finished in 25 minutes. And they probably have the potential to do the same as well. So, Fish, I hope for the sake of these two teams that they focus on that because they now have seen a little bit of what the best of the best of the two rosters can do. Mm -hmm. They can be a little more prepared for the next match. I think... That's going to start with the Blitzcrank ban. We'll see if there's any other changes that uh, Ohio Wesley wants to make. But we will take a break. We've got Game 3 here in our Navigators Mid-East NECC2 game coming up right after this. Misery Cordia and Ohio Wesley. Who gets their first win of the year? Find out shortly.
Welcome back in here to the NECC, our final game of the day here on the NECC2 channel. A Game 3 showdown between Navigator Mideast teams. It's Ms. Misericordia Cougars who just absolutely took off in Game 2, taking on the Ohio Wesleyan Onyx here. Fish and Sofchan calling this game, and Sofchan, I, I don't know what to expect because Game 1 was a very tight game all the way till the end, Ohio Wesleyan. Finally won that one. Game two, it was never close for minute one. It started and ended with a fantastic roster swap by Misery Cordia. So what are you expecting here in game three? This do or die for both teams looking for their first win of the season. First off, Fish, hi. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Um, second off, I believe Misery Cordia and I expect them to keep the same roster settings that we had in the last game it worked perfectly it was a steamroll Mwah. proceed yeah. uh ohio i want them to have learned from this matchup i want them to have seen how much they can do with the blitzcrank how much they can do with mumu and stuff like that they can just pin you down in place and then just obliterate you with a nanny or a darius so i want them to be prepared for that i want the draft to you possibly reflect it we know that in lower levels like navigators division it's not as common to have a draft showing as much com intricacy in regards to the counters and the bends but we want to see at least the players feeling more confident on how they can play given that they have learned a little bit more about their enemies i think the blitzcrank ban one to start off uh expected I think perfect decision by side of Ohio Wesleyan, who will now be on the blue side, of course, getting some pick sides well. after losing. The anti ban is interesting by Misericordia because Oxen played so well on it. It doesn't seem like something that King Kong Chrono would play. He's been playing in more, you know, melee champions with the Echo, with the Silas. So taking Annie away from Oxen is a very interesting choice, I think, for the side of Misericordia. And we'll see what is going to be the call on this one. The Nyla and the Silas are also banned. Caitlyn and Tom Kench out of the table. I totally agree with you. The Blitzcrank was definitely the one thing to go to for the first ban uh, if you are Ohio Wesleyan. First pick is going to be Akali. And we already have Misericordia Cougars going for an insane composition of 5v5s. The Malphite, the Amumu are just once again going to be able to lock you down in place. And if they have a nice damage burst on the on the mid lane on the ADC that they can match with it, that can match it with, it's going to be in. Incredible. At least haven't seen our Queen Arachne Arachnide um, in a while. Swain on King Kong Chrono. So I definitely agree with you that any does not suit King Kong Chrono's style. So I, so I also don't understand the any man. <laughs> Maybe it was to take it away from Oxen. I'm not quite sure that it was kind of an interesting one. They do get the Seraphine mid, which is so strong, has been forever. And I think one thing to take a note of, we do again, we do get to see the summoners for at least half the side. It looks like Creatures and Phoenix have actually swapped. It looks like it will be Creatures, at least based on the order they're in, and they are usually in the uh, correct order. It will be Creatures in the top lane on that Akali, and it will be Phoenix in the bot lane on an AD carry. Curious to see how that goes. Saintly had been kind of destroying Phoenix in that top side, so I understand the swap. How confident he is on AD carry, that remains to be seen, but that is an interesting choice to put Creatures in the top lane on an assassin and put their top laner down under an ADC. You usually don't see that wide of uh, champion uh, pools for some of these players, so curious to see how Ohio Wesleyan does with that big of a swap. One thing I have to say, Misericordia, is that 
they have a protect the jinx composition <laughs> they have everything from heedless from engages to to peeless to what was the mid lane again Seraphine, um, heels, yeah. Seraphine, there you go. The peels again. And yep. it's just going to be the dreamland for Jinx. She's going to rack down the city. Piltover is going to be hers. And on the other side, I think they have to be very aggressive in shutting down the Jinx so she doesn't scale because we know how much she can do once she gets those items going. She's not going to be super proactive in the beginning of the game. So uh, locking her down is going to be essential for Ohio Wesleyan. Mm, is there anything in particular that you expect from either of these teams, Fish? I think the big thing for uh, Ohio Wesleyan is I expect them to kind of play similar to that game one style of aggression, not the game two off style that they drafted, but I expect them to try and be aggressive, especially on that bottom side with the Zyra looking for roots. Again, I think a lot of this hinges on how Creatures and Phoenix play in different roles. I mean, Akali obviously wants to be an aggressive. That matchup in the Malphite, a very interesting one. And I will say, I'll have to wait till we get into game for confirmation, but it looked like there were actually some very interesting roster swaps from the side of Missouri Cordia as well, just based off of, because it says the name of who was banning. It said Sketchy Pepperoni was banning, which means he's first in the lineup, which means he's in the top lane now on that Malphite. So we might have just very odd rosters for this game three, <laughs> Sofchan, that are going to throw everything we've seen so far right out the window. <laughs> everything just going down to drain fish but it's for you guys in the audience that don't know NECC that much it's totally normal to have roster changes in the beginning of the season there's still that time for the players and the teams to acclimatize and try to understand what is going to be the roster lock once it arrives the dates should be the, the, available in the discord so be always attentive of that don't lose anything. You don't want to get any sort of disqualification because of it. So mm, yeah. right now is the moment to test things out, to limit tests with your composition. You haven't had that much time. You had exams. You haven't scrimmed that much. It's fine. The first weeks you have enough to get to know your enemies in your division, in your conference, and to understand what works best for your team internally. And I think as you pointed out, you know, the other thing is you have to remember these are college kids, right? There's tests that come up. There's exams that come up. You just might have to be, what if Phoenix is gone? Do we have a backup top laner? What if Creatures is gone? Can someone pulse play ADC? There's always that as well, where you want to have a well-rounded roster where you don't want to miss the playoffs because one week your ADC had a really important exam the next day, couldn't come to your game, and you just kind of threw somebody out there. So I think there's always that as well. Sometimes you get lost that these are college students who are balancing both things. And just to pull the curtain back, as Sofian said, for our roster for Ohio Wesley, and they had four mid laners listed. So there is a very wide roster that these teams have to pick from. So I'm excited. Again, if Sketchy Pepperoni switches, which I will say, based off the team comp, it kind of makes sense. You... Don't pick someone who is dominant on Blitzcrank, a Sona. I think that one was, I was like, <laughs> scratch. I was like, I, those, don't, those are not similar styles. Give the man Thresh. Give him something. So maybe that's my sketchy pepperoni swap. But I'm very curious because if Misery Cordia changed the comp, they just won, what was it, like 37 to 4? I don't know what to expect to get yep. three soap chain. I have no idea. It was. It really was. I think it was exactly that 37 to 4. And I totally agree with you. To a person that done so well on the blitz screen, give them a thrash, give them a Nautilus, give them a pike, but don't give them Sona, one of the most passive champions in the game until you reach level 6. And even when you do, you got to be very careful because it's one of the squishiest ones. So... I, I totally agree. Malphite is going to suit this player much better on the top lane. So it makes a lot of sense. If they continue the same sort of play style they had, we're going to see a Malphite going for very aggressive initiatives and engages into team fights even in early stages they have a tp so whenever the 14 minutes down they're going to be able to even rotate through to other lanes and i think that's going to be very very important for misericordia cougars and let's have a look at their roster changes as we mentioned yeah though boy is Welcome back to, to support mm -hmm. miscreant on the jungle and sketchy pepperoni in the top lane now meat and cheesy continues on adc 
The other one is missed. Actually, our ADC from game one is in at mid over Oxen. So again, you never know if something came up. Again, maybe you're just trying to experiment with your roster, but this is almost a completely different team. Meat <laughs> Cheesy, the only player remaining in the same role from their game two stop. I'm very curious to see how this will play out. I think the big kind of question mark is how top lane will go, right? We kind of knew in game one and game two, Saintly Comic was going to dominate. He absolutely won both those matchups. was a big reason why they won game two on that. Darius, Creatures versus Sketchy Pepperoni, I think two of the top players for both their sides, plus the Akali versus Malphite is a very, very interesting matchup to keep an eye on because Akali might struggle into a tank until she can run Malphite out of mana. And then that might be free pickings, and that might be a fed assassin that Meat and Cheesy and Doughboy have to deal with. Not only that, it's creatures with the TP and the Ignite on the Conqueror as well. So exactly as you said, as soon as Sketchy Pepperoni doesn't have any mana anymore, especially since they're running Comet, you're going to see a champion not using that many abilities, just trying to clear the wave as a melee champion that they are, whereas creatures are going to be able to deal a little more damage with the skill shots and just engage whenever possible. A futile thing on the Elise is definitely going to be a surprise because I haven't seen this champion in a very long time. And that does mean that the team on the red side is just full of AP champions and Phoenix being the only one that runs solely AD. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm curious how the build, I think Miscreant can definitely get away with a very tanky build. We do get a root right away on the Doughboy, but Mami Nami not able to find any follow-up here as Creatures with the Shuriken Toss going to jump right onto Sketchy Pepperoni, doing a great job with those early trades. And I think you're right. I think this... Very heavy AP team, especially into a Moo Moo, into a Malphite potentially as well, could allow for just absolute beef tanks to be built on the side of Misery Cordia's futile thing is here. Looking for the cocoon, gonna land it on the meat cheesy to cleanse, pop right away into a root, gonna force the flash and the heal. Three summoner spells blown in the first gank bot lane there. Fantastic job by Futile Thing. Definitely really, really good there. The cocoon landing. Nice reaction. Plans from meeting Cheesy as well, but they knew that the damage was going to be a lot since Mum, nah, Mummy Nami was really great on the timing with the root as well. They waited for the cocoon to expire, therefore, the cleanse as well, and dealing as much damage as they could. They had to use the flash. Miss uh, Miscreant is on the top lane here. Oh, gets a nice bandage toss. There's not enough damage so far. <laughs> that one is going to land. They just dash away and the Akali survives for another day. Yeah, it was a fantastic job by Creatures using that Twilight Shroud right as he got stunned. So even though the bandage toss did land, there was no follow-up. Well, Phoenix did take a lot of damage. I'm not quite sure how in that bottom lane. Does still have the heal, but that's something to keep an eye on. He could be burst down here with a good power core combo from Doughboy, who ends up shooting it onto Mami Nami. Meanwhile, Creatures and Sketchy Pepperoni battling it out and with Malphite out of mana this is the time for this Akali to look for a way to maybe pick up first blood but it looks like Sketchy Pepperoni's gonna back recharge that uh, corrupting potion and get some more mana and I assume teleport back to lane to keep it pushing against this Akali. Less than a minute on the clock for those objectives to turn up the reset on the Amumu. Okay, they just baited me. <laughs> 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 They're going to try to look for something, maybe just deep warding, try to find out where Elise is, where her pathing is going to be. Just resets now. And we might see both junglers converging into the bottom path. We have the Drake spawning in 20. Is in plenty of time as we... No, it's around 20 seconds for you to reset, come back in the beginning of the game, a little bit more, 25 seconds, if you don't have any boots to come back to that pit area. Mami Nami and Phoenix have pushed really far. They have collapsed the the minions onto the turret. They're going to push a little more and more. Nice damage on Meat and Cheesy. Got the hook onto Doughboy as well. Comet is going to land and is going to make that red team bottom lane very very thirsty for the fountain and in the top path creatures and sketchy pepperoni still going for that 1v1 and akali pushing more and more into the turret well here 
here comes Mama. Here comes Miscreant Flash into the bandage toss immediately onto Mommy Nami. There is that first blood. Another bandage toss onto Phoenix has to use the heal, taking a ton of ticking damage. Does get a great use of the spell shield there to get some mana back. And here comes Utah Thing and King Kong Chrono. They're immediately gonna burn down Meat Cheesy. Can Miscreant get away? A flash from Phoenix right into the Amumu's face. It's a bandage toss as well. But worth it as they pick up the kill, a very aggressive play. There's that Amumu with the blasting wand once again, Soap Chan, and this time it does not work out as well. Yeah, to be fair, it was a very lovely follow-up from a futile thing and mm -hmm. King Kong Corona. The communication from the team saying, okay, <laughs> we're gonna be down soon. Just come here, come help, because the pressure we get in the bot lane means that we get priority at Drake. And that's what they're doing in the mid lane as well. The Swain is pushing the wave, trying to shove it against the Seraphine. And that's gonna help them get the pressure and the vision onto the Drake area. Interesting to see that Elise is going for a blue buff before that. Little does he know that <laughs> sometimes, as we saw in the previous game, it's just better to go for the objectives right away, get them as soon as possible, instead of thinking that the game lasts 40 minutes. <laughs> Breaches here has a great chance of potentially kill Sketchy Pepperoni Shirkin Toss going to land. There is no mana, but instead decides to back off with the tower there and allow Sketchy Pepperoni to get the back off. The dragon has spawned, so a couple of pings going out to it. It is a cloud dragon. Unfortunately, Sof Chan, that is the uh, the redheaded stepchild of all the dragons. Not really a care for most players for <laughs> the. Uh, the pitiful buffs the Cloud Dragon brings to the table. Oh, Fish, I, th that's what I was saying. The priority was all um, Ohio Wesleyan. And then all of a sudden you have a Mumu there, you have Vision in the bush. You have probably a Mumu taking the Scuttle Crab. Was there any Scuttle Crab there? Where is the Scuttle Crab? Oh my god. Okay, he's all right, it's on cooldown. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's just very interesting. For example, in this situation, if I was Ohio Wesleyan, I would have already gotten the Drake. And if I was Misericordia Cougars, I would have just seen, well, they're not here just yet. I'm going to ward. I'm going to ward the pit. I'm going to put a pink ward. I'm going to put something around the river. And they have not. So, of course, they don't have vision. They can't contest this one. And it's going to be um, Ohio Wesleyans getting the first Drake of the game. It is Ohio Wesleyan, as you said. Maybe a play on the Doughboy there, but Doughboy will back off as Phoenix and Mami Nami looking for a route as Phoenix goes back to clear that wave. The Sivir has really been burning through mana, mana spanning, the, spanning the boomerang, spanning the cube to try and do damage. So this cost them, I think, a couple of chances at a kill. Is It's been a rather slow game. The CS, as you see across the board, pretty close for the most part. It is a 20 CS lead for Mist in that mid lane over King Kong Chrono. But besides that, that's really the difference in the game. It's a 100 gold lead less than that for both for the side of Misericordia, and it's a very even game. I think, ultimately, the, the thing that makes these two teams very even in the score is how whenever one team has made a mistake instead of the other way the other team capitalizing that already they're also doing mistakes <laughs> so <clears throat> that at the end of the day is just a sl slower paced game that we end up having here and it's totally fine as we said the the teams are acclimatizing with the new season it's just the second week we have another very drastic rotation of ch of players in the Misericordia Cougars uh, roster. In the top lane though, Creatures is really going to try to go for something here on Sketchy Pepperoni, but Mistrand is around the corner, mid lane as well, to another gank there, so everything is happening right now. Oh, the curse has had Mummy into the Unstoppable Force, into the Bandage Toss. And Miscreant picks up the kill onto Creatures, just as you had mentioned, Sofchan. He headed up there, got a free kill. It helps this Malphite out, can start pushing these towers. We have not seen many plays. I think one plate across the entire map has fallen right now. And there might be a couple more coming here for Mami Nami and Phoenix. Of course, the root does miss. We'll see if they want to push towards this tower, if they just want to reset for some gold. 
considering how how little mana Phoenix has, is definitely a reset time. King Kong Chrono dealing some damage onto Mist 4. They get very scared. He cats on that one. Flash away. Mm. Being a mid laner, you don't have the luxury of letting yourself die as many times as they ended up dying as Nami did in the previous game, just getting the, the wards cleared. So as a mid laner, you gotta be a little more careful, especially since you haven't died a single time this game, especially when you'd give the second kill to your enemy mid laner. I respect that. I think it was a little premature, but I definitely respect the... Well, respect <laughs> that this player had in in regards to that enemy. Uh, Miss did not want to get caught by feudal, cocoon, feudal things cocoon, and we do see King Kong Chrono has rotated up. Unfortunately, walked right over a pink ward. So the sketchy pepperoni will be able to just simply run away. There is an Elise coming up as well. And with the Rift Herald, it looks like we know where this is going to be dropped. That is top side of the map. And Mumu, unfortunately, is on the bottom side. So there is no help for this poor Malphite. But he holds it off well. Miscreant comes behind Phoenix. Great spell shield on the first bandage toss. And both junglers, unfortunately, uh, run into some issues. Looking for ganks <laughs> across the map here. So we remain 2-2. Two two. Nothing much to be found aside from the rotations from the junglers, some invading from Elise, a few tail thing trying to get something at least ahead since the gank didn't come to fruition. Mami Nami and Phoenix have been pushing this bottom lane just relentlessly. So that was very close to getting a nice trap from meeting Cheesy. It didn't quite land. And I am very surprised, happily surprised, for the Misericordia Kruger team because Meat and Cheesy has maintained even a lead on top of the Sivir when she can just push. Like, the two champions that I think that can push that much in the, in the bottom lane have to be Sivir and Tristana. And the Jinx is just keeping up really, really well, and that's going to help them a lot in the late game. Regis is going to get dived on once again. Meanwhile, Mami Nami going to get hit by the Crescendo. Will get hit by the Super Mega Death Rocket and go down. Creatures cannot get away. Is King Kong going to flash forward? Going to use the, uh, the Swain Alt pick up one. Meanwhile, Phoenix so close flashes forward. Looking for a kill on the Doughboy and Meat and Cheesy. They get one. The tower is going to kill Phoenix. Oh, no. They do <laughs> pick up a double kill. It ends up being a two-for-two two bot lane and a one-for-one one top lane. So again, we remain even at five-to-five five with the gold almost the same. Though that will change here once the Rift gets a charge and picks up the plates and first tower. There you go. To be fair, that was a very hard target lock management for uh, Ohio Wesleyans to pull off. And Meat and Cheesy still got that last zap at the end, which means not only a little bit of damage on the Sivir, but definitely the slow so she couldn't get out of range from the turret was crucial to get that kill in in exchange. It was a two for one, right? Very nice rotation from a futile thing. And I have seen Phoenix how they are playing and they position themselves very confidently and they really showed in the play that they had going in the bot lane right now that was the as you said it was the first terror to be taken down to be fair it just it just feels like forever <laughs> <laughs> it feels like forever i don't know why i think it's because of how many things happening all around the map at the same time oh we're gonna see the encore going on on this one but fish take it away king kong gonna be able to make it away just simply absorbs not only the Encore, as you said, but another route from Mist and gets out without much issue. Futile Thing going to throw in some spiders, get some nice burn damage going there on the enemy team. And that is just how tanky this Swain is going to be. I think target focus for Misery Cordy is going to be huge. So, Shani, if you blow everything on this Swain, he's going to survive, especially when that ult is up. They've got to find ways to maybe find the Sivir, they find the Elise, not the Swain, though. <laughs> Not only oh Okay. Okay, that was actually very close. <laughs> that was ridiculously close. I think it wasn't that close because I at least was a little 
uh, to the right and it wouldn't hit the champion. Therefore, it wouldn't deal damage to, to the Drake anyway. But it was very close. Nice attempt there from Meat and Cheesy. What I was going to mention is that not only King Kong Chrono on the Swain is very strong and tanky right now with the Leandris. Whenever they get a Xerneas going, it's gonna be late game disaster for Misericordia Krugers, Krugers. And they are coming into a point where, unfortunately, even if you are very tanky, if you get collapsed upon like that, if you are overextending, you're gonna go down. So, gotta respect your opponent and understand, well, we don't have vision, so might as well just stay a little bit retreated. Yeah, this is a fantastic, I mean, it's 16 minutes, I don't know if you can call it a gank, but really just a great roam by Sketchy Pepperoni. You kind of walk down through a river, walk past no vision, as you said, and walked right into the Swain, who did not have the stopwatch, did not have the Zonis, as you mentioned, so that kind of classic Swain combo, pop the Demonic Ascension, let you build up stacks, and just sit in Zonis was not available, but it will be for our next fight. We do have an Infernal Soul, by the way, on the map, of Chan, which could be huge because of the fact that Ohio Wesleyan already has two dragons. They could be looking at an Infernal Soul here in this maybe, you know, 27, 28 minute mark if they're able to get the next one. And that would be huge for them to kind of get over the hump and kind of change this game. Because right now, again, we're deadlocked. And the gold is almost even. It's <laughs> less than 100 gold lead for Ohio Wesleyan. That is so true, Fish. And I'm just thinking about those ricochets, those boomerangs from Phoenix. If they get the, the Infernal so that's going to be huge. At the same time, if Jinx gets that one, that, that could be incredible. I don't think they have ultimate. They actually do. King Kong Corona just holding on to that ultimate. They were a little afraid. Maybe just waiting for the companions to come around a futile thing is just there on the river if they go on to meet and cheesy they land a nice hook on them and the ultimate has been fought well, look out for miscreant miscreant doesn't even get in range there's the crescendo and the follow-up bandit toss on a futile thing gonna repel away sketchy pepperoni coming in has the Whoa! open stopwatch by king kong chrono he'll go down but it's a sick play nonetheless. A great kill by Creeches to finish off one. And now the Sakali is here. Perfect execution. Rank two going to go off and get a kill as well. A fantastic play by King Kong Chrono. He dies for his team, but he picks him up two, three kills, excuse me, overall. And they'll take that exchange. And they'll get Rift Herald off of it. <laughs> that is true. And King Kong Chrono not only got that those skills to everyone, he was the setup as you mentioned with the stopwatch that allowed all of that to happen we still have the last herald on the map i'm um, seeing this jinx use her her ultimate sometimes just for vision i think i think maybe jinx thinks she's ash <laughs> and she's confusing the key bindings there there's not e there's r so <laughs> definitely Interesting to see that they're choosing for that instead of sometimes, you know, just just buying buying wards maybe. <laughs> they could get that vision going, and that could help tons. To be fair, that was definitely a joke because so far I have seen the most wards coming from Zericordia Cougars, and it has helped plenty. But sometimes. Ohio Wesleyan is just taking the upper hand of that one. Maybe they're gonna do once again here. Oh, Cocoon is going to miss on to Sketchy Pepperoni. The yeah, Shuriken Toss will miss as well. The Happy Bee will be thrown up. And he will simply walk away. We did get a flash by Mommy Nami in the mid throughout the queue. Saw that Miscreant was over the wall of the chickens and said, Nope, not today. I don't want to get <laughs> caught out and immediately flashed away. And I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I know jokes aside, these Jinx Rockets, I've only ever seen them as like Hail Marys for objectives. Where's the Jinx Rocket <laughs> on the King Kong Chrono? to, you know, maybe save the Malphi at all. Maybe it's not up in time, we'll have to see, but I'm honestly still just kind of blown away at how well that stopwatch was. As someone who plays a lot of Malphite, there's not a worse feeling than when you alt in, you know you've got the kill, and then they just stop watching, you just kind of sit there looking like, oh, <laughs> that's <was> awkward. <laughs> Oh, that that oh that didn't go as planned. That, that's unfortunate. <laughs> You're just on top of the team, like, well, guys, uh, I'm dead, but I tried my hardest. Uh, <laughs> I did my best. I uh, that that's it. Oh, <laughs> oh no, fight. Sona! Double 
teleport coming in here. Sketch Pepperoni, he's not gonna miss that one. A three-man knockup into the Encore. Creech is trying to find a kill on Woo! the Miscreant. He will do that. That's all he's gonna get. Utile Thing gets shut down as well. A huge gold chunk going over. And the first Infernal Dragon of the game goes over to Misery Accordi on the back of Sketchy Pepperoni in a fantastic team play. That is going to definitely slow down the chase for the, the Infernal Soul for Ohio Wesleyan. And Misery Accordi Cougars possibly getting back onto the board, trying to get, well, not on the lead so far in regards to gold, on the lead in kills, but it's definitely where you want to start building for that big carry jinx as she can melt turrets down. Mommy Nami going to try to get a... That, I, I thought that landed. That, that was very weird. <laughs> that was very weird because mm -hmm. they were out of the range and then they were in and they didn't get rooted. Interesting. Tell me about it, Riot Games. <laughs> It wouldn't be Riot Games without some sort of spaghetti involved, at least in the <laughs> code good. side of things. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe that's what the meat and cheesy, and they were having spaghetti tonight. But again, I think the big thing here, uh, Sof Chan, is going to be how well Misericordia can combo this Malphite all, right? It feels like any team fight that Malphite hits three or more people, especially with the squishy nature of the majority of the Ohio Wesleyan team. That should just be a free team fight, right? You can Malphite all into Encore, really into Crescendo if you really just want to not let him play the game. So I think finding ways to dodge his Malphite ult is going to become imperative for the side of Ohio Wesleyan. And uh, I think I smell one coming right now. Oh, he turned around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> feels bad, Fish. Feels bad. I totally agree with you there. I think, unfortunately, for Misericordia is that, is that if they let this game continue a little bit more there are at least three no four players because they're all ap that have the possibility of doing a zonius you have the akali you have the elise you have the swain you have the zyra <laughs> so mm -hmm. if that is the one thing to let you get away from the malfi ultis well then they're good if they get to that late game we saw that at crescendo unfortunately missing but sketchy pepperoni is still around the corner cocoon is gonna hit We'll see if this next fight is going to be well executed with the amount of CC the Misericordia has on their favor. They did lose the Crescendo, but they still have the Encore plus the Malphite Dalt. They are all grouped up right now. This is getting really sketchy oh! as they landed on the three. Oh! There's the three-man Encore, and they couldn't have drawn it up any better. Phoenix popping on the hunt, trying to get away, but going to get hit by the bandage toss. There's the Super Mega Death Rocket, so Creatures <laughs> and Futile thing will get away, but that's how you draw it up if you're Misery Court. That's how you pick this team for. Three-man Malphite all, three-man Encore, maybe Free Baron, because they do not know if Futile thing is there. That's a great ward over the wall. They can't see him in the brush, but it will at least mean that Futile thing has a chance at a steal if he so chooses. And yeah, he's not going to choose. <laughs> I think they were a little too early in popping that fruit. They should have waited a little bit for the vision because they really just denounced themselves that they were there. But let's focus on the incredible play from Zericordia Cougars. If we had a highlight or a replay at this point, we would have been seeing that male fight engage just so nicely. As you were saying, Fish, really just reading your mind, seeing that opening for the unbreakable force, going in, getting everyone knocked up into the encore into the bandages and the damage from meat and cheesy was just that to finish it all up you don't even need a crescendo and that's why you build for a team like this because if you even don't have one teammate or one ultimate that's fine you still have four others <laughs> yeah the, the crescendo i really feel like the crescendo or the uh, bandages for miscreate just overkill at that point right like they're going yeah, yeah. to die in the unstoppable force, in the encore, especially with this Jinx now, four, three, and six, has their second item finished, working on their third. Mommy, Nami, no! We've seen this story too many times! <laughs> Luckily, thus land a very good root sketchy pepperoni. Once again, this top lane play for Misery Cordia, regardless who it's been, has been so fantastic now in a 2v1. Gonna be forced to use that unstoppable force to get away. 
And that's kind of a win for the side of Ohio Wesley, but look how fast that Malphite cooldown is, especially at rank two. He is just gonna have that up in the next fight is Preach just tries something, hits the shuriken toss, wants to go in, gonna use the perfect execution, but now gonna look for another one here, but Crescendo is gonna cancel it. And Miss trying to make it away, but will die to the next shuriken toss, and that's 800 gold in the Preach's pocket. Yeah, not just the gold, but a big cooldown on that encore. I think it was one of the situations that you just see, well, I accept my faith. And my fate and I will just die now. That's fine. <laughs> my team is going to have the priority on the Drake anyway, and I trust them to finish this one up. And we'll see if Miskrin... Okay, nice play. Pulling it away. The the plants are going to push it back into the pit, and that allows for Ohio Wesleyans to come back around. Cool. Being cheesy gets one. He's trying to keep away from creatures, however. Sketchy Pepperoni going to fall. That's another big shutdown, and... Unfortunately, without that Wombo combo, they had no Malphite ult, they had no Encore. They just really couldn't fight that, and as you said, maybe using that Encore and getting caught by Mist, the difference maker there, because you could see no CC and Ohio Wesley can pop off with this Akali and this Elise. You have to be very careful on those cooldowns, and at this point in the game with 40 seconds for a respawn, you gotta be careful with those skills too. And right now, it is one Drake away for Owu to be able to get that Inferno. So, so much damage on Mr. Gan, falling down on health. The last boomerang is not going to hit, but at least you have a Sona, right? You not only have the Seraphine, you have a Sona, you're gonna have sustain for days. But the oak is also a lot coming from the side of Owu, where you have the Zyra, you have the Sivir, you have the Elise. And I see both teams playing accordingly to their draft. But can they just keep the nerves down, keep the nerves of steel to be able to keep those ultimates intact for the fight before it starts? Zoc reaches away on that ward, chasing down Futile Thing, but I think, as you just pointed out, great patience by Sketchy Pepperoni to not blow that Malphite ult for the solo kill, even though it probably could have secured it. Instead, waiting for that next big team fight as the rest of Misery Concordia groups up. I mean, again, this game has been so deadlocked. Barely a thousand gold lead for Misery Concordia. 17-14. The Drakes do favor Ohio Wesleyan. So this next Infernal Drake coming up in just over three minutes is going to be so massive for both of these teams. As Doughboy has to be very careful. The poke, as you mentioned, double uh, just dot burn from the side of Ohio Wesleyan. They have to be very careful of this Misery Concordia. They have healing, but I don't think they can heal off all the damage that's coming their way. And I, I believe that right now, Ohio has the priority in regards to the lane management. They have been pushing so well. Every time we find ourselves on this side of the map, the red side of the map has been very conquered. They're going to get this one up, but the knockup also lands and it's going to get the victory on this little team fight. Very important one for the Misericordia Cougars team, Creed just trying to get away, there's still three members alive. Oh, the Ooh. Super Mega Death Rocket finally finalizes someone as it is intended to do, V. Futile thing trying to get away, unfortunately that's a futile thing to do. <laughs> as he is going to go down and now, all of a sudden, as you mentioned, respawn times, the soonest one is 15 seconds for Phoenix. This is at least a free tier two mid, potentially the inhibitor tower, depending on how well they focus, this could be an inhibitor taken down for Misericordia off of that one team. But yeah, they're gonna get this inhibitor, no question. I think they back off. That would be the smart play. That's exactly what they do. What a well executed team fight. I'd back off and go directly for the top lane. Get that turret down. It's so close. The wave has advanced. We saw a Seraphine pushing that one earlier before the team fight. So it's very nice and set up for you to have not only vision, steal all the jungle from your enemy, get the vision, go for the Baron, and have everything on the way for the victory for Misericordia Cougars after the nice comeback. But Creatures is around the corner. Unfortunately, I don't know if I, I 
I mean, no, how do you win this if you're Ohio Wesley and some shit? Because look, all of those powerful alts, they're back off cooldown already. How do you handle the four-man wombo combo of Malphite, Amumu, uh, Seraphine, and Soda alts? Because if you're even relatively close to someone else, it's going to be a game over. <laughs> that is so true. I think mainly for them, they... they have to be a little further apart, right? Try to have mm. someone coming from a flank, someone in the middle, someone that can bait an ulti with the Zonias. Right now, the Zonias on Elise is on cooldown, but the Swain still has it, so that might be a good opportunity. Maybe the Akali with the Shroud as well. So something that can bait it out and still be able to survive would be the best play so that the rest of the team comes around maybe a bait situation maybe exactly uh -huh. what misericordia is doing right now mommy nami no <laughs> smart smart to hold it they're waiting here comes futile thing though swain will give their position away it was a very good job by misericordia yes. displaying some patience and here we go dragon is up this would be infernal soul if ohio wesleyan can win this team fight Everything is up for everybody except a couple of flashes, but it's those powerful ultimates doing a great job here. Is Ohio Wesleyan in the blue staying separated? King Kong Chrono going to immediately rip the Nevermore, but he can't even get the Zonyas off on time. You oh. do not want to see that. Huge damage going out onto Phoenix. Sketchy and Pepperoni are going to chase Futile Thing. He might have an opportunity here, but unfortunately losing that Swain. Just massive. Super Dragon Death Rocket does miss, but no one for Ohio Wesleyan can even get close to the Dragon Pit right now. They are not, and Meat and Cheesy is oh. going on ham from the flank as well. They felt so comfortable to just use the fish bones because the damage from those rockets are critting insanely high. They have the uh, the Infinity Edge, they have the Kraken Slayer, they have the Phantom Dancer, they have l half of the Last Whisper, and that's going to be enough. Encore hits both of them, almost takes them out in one shot fashion. But it is going to be Misericordia Cougars guaranteeing the first win here of the second week for them. Nice three game matchup. And that is really going to boost up their confidence after having lost the first week of NECC. And a great boost in confidence, as you said, not only for that, but a great boost in confidence after how that series started, losing one nothing to Ohio Wesleyan. Thought maybe it was going to get away from them in the end. They have a fantastic game, too, and they're maybe figuring out some different team comps here. And unfortunately for Ohio Wesleyan, I think you could just throw game two away from this series. It was such a stomp. There's nothing to really take from it. I think that was a close game. It really just came down to the fact that, unfortunately, Swain got caught. They were trying to be split up, as we talked about. But when that happens and you get caught... Sometimes you just go fall over. Fortunately, didn't the Zanya's in time, but overall, what a fantastic series, as you said, so Jan. And your final thoughts on our lone series of the day here on the NECC2 between these two teams. I think my final thoughts are I really loved how Misericordia Cougars just came back from that first match. It was very, it was a dead even, as we said, but of course, mm -hmm. it was still a loss for them. Next, the steamroll. And then after changing the roster once again, I think they made very good macro decisions. They were able to, once they recognized they're not going to be stacked up together again because of the malphite, they just said, well, we're just going to pick you off and we're going to be on every corner as well to be able to counter your flanks. So that was mm -hmm. really, really nicely done. And it felt to me that Misericordia Cougars were also more effective in finishing up the game. So that is high kudos to them because I believe if Ohio Wesleyans had done that a little better, they would have had more boost in the tank to be able to come back to the second game and the third game with a little more fire. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up to the next weeks of NECC to come to see what they're going to come up with. Yeah, I do think for Ohio Wesleyan, I think that response after game two was very promising. Sometimes when you get blown out, you just kind of throw in the towel, say, hey, you know, we lost. But I thought game three was really good. I thought that looked like their best team comp of the night. Unfortunately, 
as you pointed out, I think the draft for Misericordia was just so good in Game 3. They had so many win conditions. Overall, a well-played game by both our teams, and congratulations to Misericordia picking up the win. Well, that'll do it for us here on our second NECC channel, but if you're still fiending some more League of Legends, we've got a couple more series on the main NECC channel, one going on right now, and then one after that. So if you want to check out more League of Legends, make sure to do that. If you want to come back next week, we've got League of Legends on Wednesday. So if Chan and myself will be either on the main channel or somewhere else, you don't want to miss it. Have a great evening, you guys, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was really nice. Yes, that's... I, I, I have to say, I won't be staying around. I am very tired. <laughs> oh! Good lord, it's almost 2 a.m. here. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, we're not muted.